Hey, this is Rich with Off Grid Dogs Training and Behavior. And that's taboo. And we're crazy about you because you love your dog. Uh, I see all these videos about 10 things you should know before you get a Great Pyrenees or, um, by the way, that's a Great Pyrenees. Um, or 10 things, 10 reasons not to get one and all this stuff. And um, they have some obvious stuff in there that's good, but they have a lot of stuff that I disagree with. So I'm going to do a video about you know things that are specific to our great pyrenees much different than other dog breeds so the first thing i want to start with is they are the most abandoned breed in america percentage wise there's not as many of them as pit bulls but percentage wise they get abandoned more than any other breed and there's some reasons for that not just their size um, not just, you know, the things you see on the, all the Great Pyrenees videos, not just the barking. And by the way, I have a different opinion about the barking. Um, but it's because they're a primitive breed and they were bred for thousands of years to do one particular job. And that job is to guard sheep on their own with nobody telling them what to do. So they're not a modern breed like a German Shepherd, Labrador Retriever designed and bred to work with humans. They're designed and bred to work on their own, to make their own decisions. So a lot of people can't deal with that. They have a hard time, you know, they're, they're difficult to train, especially if you try to train them like they're a Labrador Retriever, it's not gonna work. Um, so be aware of that, that they, they do get abandoned. There's great Pyrenees rescue operations just for this breed because people have so much trouble with them and the shelters don't do a good job with them either. So. That being said, the other thing you always hear about is the barking. Um, I live in a subdivision. He's, he's seven years old almost, and uh, we've had him since he was seven weeks old. So uh, we've had zero problems with barking because he does bark, which, you know, there'd be something wrong with him if he didn't, but we, he barks when we want him to bark, when there's actually the reason to be alert, he'll let us know. And then we'll be very, uh, praising of him doing his job and let him know that we see the threat and it's all good now and then that's the end of it so and he and he sleeps through the night because we exercise him mentally stimulate him and give him stuff to do during the day so he, they do tend to want to you know guard at night that's what they were bred to do but um he's never been an issue at night um hardly ever barks at night unless somebody's really trying to you know break in the house or something um his his shedding a lot of people talk about that well we we don't have an issue with shedding because we brush him every day but that's a lot of work most people aren't going to do that but um his coat i should warn everybody not to ever shave a great pyrenees i live in florida with this great pyrenees for seven years never had a problem obviously don't keep him out in the sun all day or anything but they're double they're very primitive double fur coat which most dogs don't have, keeps them cool in the summer and warm in the winter. So it actually keeps them cooler than your short-haired dog. But everybody feels sorry for him when they see me out in public in the summertime. Oh my God, he's like he's wearing a fur coat. Yeah, well, it keeps him cooler. But it's uh, it's an insulation thing. He's still hot, don't get me wrong. These, these dogs are made for cold mountains, but uh, they do very well but don't ever shave one because then they don't stay cool. They can't regulate their temperature and they get sunburned and their fur doesn't grow back right. So never ever shave a Great Pyrenees. Um, other things you should know, when you, when you start trying to train one, you should really, and you should do this with every breed of dog. You should think about what the breed is, what he was meant to do. And this dog again was meant to think on his own, to make his own decisions. So I find him to be very intelligent, very cooperative. Uh, once you build a great relationship with him and you, you have his trust and his respect, he's very willing to cooperate, but it's easier uh, almost, and, and they're born kind of knowing what to do. So like, for example, I take him out in public every day in the car. We go for car rides every day. So when we get back in the car, if he was a Labrador retriever, I'd say, you know, get in the car or in or, or up, get him to jump in the car. I don't say anything to Taboo. He knows we're going to get in the car. So I don't have to give him a command because giving him a command would actually make him stop and think. 
And by the way, I need to warn you about Great Pyrenees time. I hope you're a patient person if you're planning to get one of these because they do everything in their own time. And if you try to rush a Great Pyrenees, <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> okay. So anyway, but when I go to get in the car, he already knows to get in the car. So I don't, I don't give him the command. I just open the door and he gets in the car. And he might look around first to make sure everything's safe because that's his job is to always be alert. So I don't try to rush him. I let him look around, make sure we're not getting mugged in the parking lot. And then he jumps in the car. And I, I really think that if I gave him the command, he would actually slow down and stop to think about it and decide whether he wants to agree with me or not. So it's actually quicker in some cases not to give him a command because he knows what to do. They're very smart dogs. And like all dogs, but even more so maybe, they follow patterns and habits and routines. So, you know, if you do stuff with them all the time, they're very easy to live with. They know what uh, is going on and what, what's coming next and what to do. Um, they're very protective of small animals. And, and you know, for example, if you're, if you're socializing your Great Pyrenees in Home Depot, and you should, but you should do it properly, so don't, don't let anybody pet them. Um, then um, when he sees somebody with their chihuahua, you know, in many cases, they're already holding the little dog because that's what they do. But if they're letting the little dog walk, which is what they should do, and they see my giant dog and they get scared, they always pick up their little dog and, you know, or they've got him in the shopping cart. Well, my great Pyrenees freaks out and he wants to go toward them. Now, I don't allow him to, but what people think he's after their little dog. No. And it took me a minute to figure out what he was doing, but now I know what he's doing. He's not after their little dog. He, by the way, they have no prey drive, zero. Zero aggression, zero prey drive, because that's what they were bred to have. Um, so good luck training them with usual methods, because they have zero food drive almost. <laughs> so good luck training them with treats and uh, you know, throwing a ball or something. Um, but what he's doing is, he sees a small animal, that little chihuahua, getting picked up by a big animal. What does that look like in his great Pyrenees brain? That looks like a predator trying to make off with a baby. So he's ready to go protect that chihuahua and, and take it, you know, take that predator out. So I have to make sure he doesn't because that's chihuahua's mommy and daddy. Um, but that's what they're doing. They're protecting. Um, but they have no aggression. They have no prey drive. They have very little food drive. Um, what else would you like to know about a Great Pyrenees? Hmm.